Hello guys, this one gonna be about tile system and you're gonna like it. I've seen this short clip long time ago and since then I felt like I need to squeeze something similar in one of my projects. Because I won't lie, this looks really good. In this video I'll show you how did I make tile system that works, what are the benefits of a tile system and also we're going to talk about feature creep because not every feature is worth making. For those who see me for the first time, nice to meet you. My name is Alex, I'm making games and I'm posting videos about it. Subscribe if you haven't and let's begin. We're making this tower defense game for a new course and tile system is probably the best option for a game like this one. And since I never developed anything like it, I had a big journey ahead of me because not only scripting could be the challenge, but also visuals of the tiles itself. Uh, we had to think how it would look, so me and my friend we gathered on a call and we were checking Pinterest references and trying to understand how it would look. And then I remembered that one video from Jonas. He played different games from indie developers and there was one very memorable game. It was very beautiful and it could do this. Holy crap! And despite how beautiful the game was, the style of it felt simple. And that's what I wanted to achieve. A simple looking game that still can be interesting. And this example was a proof that sometimes simplicity is the key. My friend made a similar level layout, but there was a problem. I did not know how to make it work as a tile system without making this process tedious. I mean, I could take a tile, then place one more tile, then duplicate it, then find another corner, then... Ah! You know, uh, progress is made by men who wants an easier way of doing something. And I did not want to place cubes one by one. So I made a simple script that would make a grid of a size I need. But because tiles were different in size, I had to develop a more complex system or we had to rework the tiles itself. I want to remind you that I'm making this game for one of my courses so beginners can use it to learn how to make video games. And it means I need to remove unnecessary complications. So we had to rework tiles quite a bit. I asked my friend to make tiles that would fit within size of one cube. No matter which part of the map it is, it should be within size of one by one. And it worked. We made different tiles with the predefined pivot points, so I can simply find the new tile and replace it with the old one. Now, uh, next step is to make placement of the tiles easy. I made a custom editor buttons that would replace mesh on the main tile and added part tiles if needed. For example, here I have an inner corner which is a parent of a game object and child game object is another tile itself. Same system works for bridges and hills and it makes it easy to build any level you want. Not perfect, but definitely faster than placing cubes one by one. Now I can easily shape out the level I want within a couple of minutes. And this is not the last benefit of a system like this. It allows me to build upon it and make super easy uh, build system for towers. They can be just placed on the top of the tiles themselves. And I could even make some nice visual effects for them. For example, when I'm about to build something, I can move tiles up and it looks really nice. And also it feels really nice. It feels better than playing with a bubble wrap. Now regarding that impressive animation. You see, that one is not easy. And this was the time I had to fight feature creep. For those who don't know, feature creep is when you keep adding new things to a project just because you've got so many brilliant ideas. But it is stretching out development process which can result a burnout. You can easily get tired of the same project and then lose interest to it and in the end you would not finish it. So I had to reconsider and think if I need this. When something like this happens to you, you need to ask yourself these questions. Do I know how to do this? How long it may take? And is it really important for my game? In my case, answers were pretty simple. No, I don't know, and not really. So I decided to replace it with something simple. Not as impressive, but still very cool. What if my level were printed out like it's a 3D printer making it? Ah, another benefit of a tile system! Thanks to the tile system, simple feature like this was very easy to make. I won the fight against the feature creep and added something nice that I can show to my students. Overall, I expect this project to be super interesting. We have lots of nice towers and enemies, lots of new things to learn and easy to make. Keep in mind, it is still work in progress, so if you want to have some specific features in this course, you should let me know in the comments below. Also, I want to say that even now, while it is in development, we can see how cool this project can be. Now, thank you so much for paying attention and I want to say thanks to my patrons and give special thanks to friendly robot and retrobat gamer thanks to you guys these videos are possible